All right, today we are going to talk about detecting button presses and dealing with multiple states. And what that involves is a click of the button changes from one LED being turned on to the next. So let's go over the setup here. We have our little tactile click button here uh, bridged across the gap. And on one side, it is pulled to 5 volts. On the other side, it is going to digital pin 3. And connected on that side also is a 10K pull-down resistor. So what's happening there is when the button is not being pressed, this input at D3 is pulled to ground. So it has a low value. It's not floating. But when the button is pressed, the current will flow from the positive through there, and it will go high. So we'll have a button press. Now we have three LEDs, a red, a yellow, and a green. And I just realized, according to my programming, I plugged them in in the wrong order. But that's okay. We'll switch it later. The anodes of which are connected to pins 5, 6, and 7. The cathodes are going through resistors to ground. Now, in order to match the brightness of these, we have to do a little bit of math. Uh, the red LED takes the least amount of current, so I'm using a 220 ohm resistor on it. So the anode goes through a 220 uh, ohm resistor to ground. The yellow and the green each go through a 150 ohm resistor to ground. Now, I'll bring this up here so you can get a little better look at it and learn your resistor color codes. All right. Nothing complicated here. I'm running one ground over to this ground rail here for the button. I'm running another ground over to this ground rail. And I'm running the plus 5 volts to this plus 5 volt rail. So that is our physical setup. And what should happen is when we click the button, well, when we turn it on originally, all the LEDs will be off. We click the button, red will light up. Click it again, the red will go off, the green will light up. Click it again, the green will go off, the yellow will light up. Click it again, and all the LEDs will be off. So that is multiple states. Let's go over to the PC and have a look. Alrighty, here we go with our programming for the multiple state handling. And that was written by Learn Electronics. That's me on January 4th, 2017. So again, I've separated everything we have here into areas to make it easier for you. So we're going to start with our defines, and we define button 3. So our push button is on digital 3. Our red LED is on digital 5. Green LED is on digital 6. And our yellow LED is on digital 7. Again, we're using the define because it just makes it easier. It takes up less memory than declaring a variable for it when the program compiles. Okay, now we have our variables. We're creating an integer to hold the current state, called state, an integer called old to hold the last state, and an integer called button pole to hold the button polling state. So three total variables. Next, we'll come down here to our setup. And the first thing we do is we set our button tool input. Now, it is not technically necessary to set an input as an input. But when you're programming, it's better to leave nothing to chance and be very explicit about everything that you want. Next, we'll turn our LED pins all to output. And keeping with our uh, doctrine to keep everything very specific, we're going to set an initial state on the LEDs of making sure they are all off. That way, there's no chance that anything weird could happen 
when um, the program starts up. Alright, now we're going to come here to the loop section. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a debouncing routine to check the state of the button. Now, if you haven't ever used a debouncing routine before, I have a video on it and there's a link to it in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull or read the state of the button. And if it is 1, that means the button has been pressed. In that case, we're going to wait 50 milliseconds to allow all those little oscillations to work their way out. And we're going to do it again. Now, if this time the button is 0, we can assume it has been pressed because it was here. And then we can assume it has been released. And if that's the case, our integer state will equal the value of old plus 1. So when the program initially starts out, old is 0, so state will equal 0 plus 1 or 1. And if the button hasn't been uh, pressed, it's just going to wait 100 milliseconds and start all over again. Now, here we go with our state. So we're going to use a switch case statement here, which is what you want to use when you have multiple choices. You can do it with if statements, but you're going to have a whole bunch of nested if statements, and this just makes everything a lot easier and neater. So switch our variable state. Case 1. If state equals 1, then we turn the red LED on, and we turn the other LEDs off. Then old equals state. So we set the old state to the current state. So if we are now at 1, which we are since we're in case 1, old now equals 1. Now we come down here to case 2. This is state 2. If we're in state 2, then the green LED is turned on, and our red and our yellow LEDs are turned off. Old equals state again. So that we're at 2, state equals 2, old now equals 2. Case 3. We are going to turn on our yellow LED and we turn off the red and the green LEDs and again old equals state. So state we know is 3, old now equals 3. And then we have our default condition which means if state is not equal to 1, 2, or 3. So for instance if we were at case 3 and we went back up here and pressed the button again so old now is 3, state equals 3 plus 1 is 4. That's not 1, 2, or 3. Therefore, we're going to come to default, which shuts everything off, and sets our old state as 0. So we are back to the beginning. It's not very difficult. And if you wanted to see how it works, you could uh, just put a serial begin here in your setup and add a serial print state to each one of these statements. Open up a serial window and see how it looks. Okay? All right, let's go see how it works. Okay, so our code is loaded. Let's power up the Arduino. All right, everything is powered. And now you notice no LEDs are on because we set all their initial states to off. First press, red. Second press, green. Third press, yellow. Fourth press, off. Now we start again, red, green, yellow. And you'll notice with our debouncing routine that it is not the actual press that turns it on, but the release. I like to do that because 
that means no matter how quick of a button you press, it is only actuated on the release. Makes it nice, neat, smooth. So there you have it. Now, if you like this sort of thing, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and share it somewhere. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?